So in this SNF Circuits videos, we're looking at Project 525 up to Project 534. So Project 525 is our SCR motor control. There it is in the book. And here it is on the board. So we've got six volts, and it's all being turned on and off via our slide switch there. We have both our alarm and music ICs, and their outputs are being coupled together, which then goes through our six volt lamp into our SCR here and then it goes through our motor and then back here we do have our little D3 diode which is keeping the current going in one direction powering our alarm IC and music ICs and our SCR here is being controlled via our photo resistor which is also being limited by our 1000K R2 resistor there so it has the light input on our photoresistor is changed, we can turn that SCR on and off and affect our motor operation there. So when we turn the slide switch on, right now we're getting enough light into the photoresistor there that our SCR can turn on and stay on. And so our, mu our music IC and alarm ICs are putting out output and we can see it flickering through our L2 six volt lamp there, but of course we can also hear it and also notice it through the fan that the motor is going up and down as those two outputs change. Now if we cover up their photoresistor, well now of course the SCR turns off and we don't have our motor or light or IC is doing anything now. As soon as we let the light back in, the light and the fan come back on. And by manipulating this, we can adjust the fan speed ever so slightly by making the SCR turn on and off. Now, unlike a PNP or NPN transistor, we're not changing how much current is going through here. We're basically just making the SCR turn on and off by changing how much current is getting into the gate there through our photo photo resistor here. So that's how project number 525 works. And now we're going to move on to project 526, which is output forms. So here we are with project 526, the output forms. Here it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So here we've got multiple output forms. So we get our three volt source, and we're actually making use of our solar panel here for the first time. We got our meter. Of course, our on and off switch turns everything on and off. We have our red LED that's being controlled via our NPN transistor, which is being limited by our 1K resistor here and then our R5100K resistor going into the gate, but we have the output voltage of our solar cell here going through our meter and also into the gate of the NPN transistor. Now over here we have our seven segment LED display, and then we have our speaker, our two and a half volt lamp, and our motor with the fan connected in series at, at the very end here. So when we turn the circuit on, our red LED there lights up, our seven segment LED comes on with the letter Y, and then our fan spins up, you can see our two and a half volt lamp is lit up, and you can hear the motor coming through our speaker there as it runs. Now for the meter here, we have to, of course, put some light into our solar cell there so you can see as we put some light on our solar cell we can make that meter deflect. Now the camera's probably not picking it up very well but there's a subtle change in the brightness of the LED because more current is going through the gate and down here through the transistor which is actually taking some capacity away from the LED there to be able to fully light up. So the LED dims a little bit and we put some light on our solar cell there.
And of course, the more light we put on the solar cell, we could actually make that LED go out even more. So, that's generally how this circuit works. So that's how Project 526 is. Now, Project 527 is the transistor AM radio. And I'm going to skip this project in this video for a very simple reason. Because because we've done it already. This is project 306 from the SC500, which we've already gone through, the AM radio. And compare the two circuits here. They're basically identical except for maybe moving some parts around because the only real difference is that here they have an NPN transistor. They used a PNP transistor here. So this is technically also a transistor AM radio. So because of that, we are not going to build and demonstrate this project. Again, this is another one of those kinds of projects that I've complained about before in the previous videos that doesn't need to be in the book because we already have done something just like this. All they did was change one part around, and change the name slightly, and claim it's a whole new project. But no, we're not going to do that one. So we are skipping 527. So we're moving on to 528, which is the adjustable solar power meter. Here we are, project number 528, the adjustable solar power meter. There's the book, and here it is on the board. So it's pretty simple. We're using our solar cell as our power source, monitoring its current using our meter, slash switch to turn on and off the circuit, and then we got our variable resistor to adjust the amount of current going around in the circuit. So we turn the switch on with it in the middle there, and we get some deflection on our meter there just a little above the one mark. And depending where my hand is over the solar cell, putting some shade on it, I can make that meter deflect downward because less light is getting on the solar cell, so there's less current overall in the circuit. Move the variable resistor to the right here, and now we've got almost five on our meter there. So now we've got more current going through the circuit with the same amount of light shining on it. You know, let's put my hand on it, we get greater deflection on it. Because now that we're allowing more current to pass through the circuit based on our variable resistor, the deflection on the meter is also greater. Now if we deflect all the way to the left, now the meter doesn't change as much because we're only allowing a very small amount of current through the circuit there, just above the zero mark. So that's how Project 528 works. So now we're going to move on to Project 529, which is the fan blade storing energy. Here we are, project number 529, the fan blade storing energy. There it is in the book. Here it is on the board. So we have our 3 volt source, our second V control by our press switch with our fan and motor there, and our LED. Now the fan has the positive going this way, and the LED has the positive going that way. So we power up the circuit here. Our fan comes on, but our LED, of course, doesn't light because it's in the reverse polarity there. But when I take my finger off the press switch and you watch the LED, the LED flashes. And that's because when we disconnect the source from the circuit there, which in this case is our battery or our B6 box here, the LED lights up briefly because now the motor with the fan on there providing inertia momentarily has enough current being provided to light up our LED there. So essentially the fan blade, once it's up to speed there, is now storing energy in it in form of mechanical energy. Then the motor acts as a generator and turns it back into electrical energy and briefly lights up our red LED there when we disconnect our battery from it. So that's how Project 529 works. Now Project 530 is the antenna storing energy. So we're just going to modify the circuit a little bit here. 
and we're going to take the motor and replace it with our antenna. So take our antenna A1 here and put this into the circuit. Now the antenna is basically an inductive coil so it's going to store the electrical energy in a magnetic field as opposed to the mechanical energy stored with the fan there with our motor. So if I press B6, we're not going to see anything happen, but once I release the press switch, again you see our LED light up briefly there. And two, if you watch the LED on our B6 there, it dims down quite a ways because the A1 here is taking quite a bit of energy storing the electrical energy in a magnetic field there. It has quite a pull down on the circuit there. And again, when that magnetic field collapses, just like our transformer, which we'll show in a later project, it generates a small current and that makes our LED light up. So that's how Project 530 works. So now we're going to look at Project 531, which is the electromagnet storing energy. So here we are with Project 531, the electromagnet storing energy. There is in the book and here it is on the board. So again, we have our electromagnet in the circuit here now, using our slide switch and again our red LED to show it. So we turn our slide switch on that energizes the electromagnet there so it's storing the energy up in the coil there I don't know if I can show if it's on or not with this well, yeah the camera is probably not going to be able to see it but there is just an ever slight pull on this little tie which of course is metallic so that proves that our electromagnet is on now when we turn the slide switch off you see our LED momentarily flashes rather brightly there. And again, when we disconnect the battery from the electromagnet, this field collapses and that induces a small current momentarily which lights up our LED. So turn it on, turn it off, and it lights up. So that's how Project 531 works. So now we're going to move on to Project 532, which is the transformer storing energy. So here we are with Project 532, the transformer storing energy. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So again, we have our red LED. It's being limited by our 100 ohm resistor this time, and we're connected across the large windings of our transformer there and we're using our press switch to control it. So we press the press switch, we energize the windings on this side of our transformer, and when we disconnect the battery, again our LED lights up momentarily because just like the antenna, and you can see that it's got the same kind of markings because again they're both acting as an inductor storing energy in a magnetic field. When that magnetic field collapses, it induces a current momentarily, and that lights up our LED. So that's how Project 532 works. Now we're going to look at Project 533, which is the relay storing energy. So again, we're going to modify the project here a little bit. And instead of our transformer, we're going to have the relay, and we're going to have the coils on the end there. And then now we're going to repeat the same thing as before. Now again, the coil on our relay here that acts as the switch is very similar to all the windings that are in our electromagnet here. So again, it's going to store energy in the form of a magnetic field. So we press our press switch, and our relay actually clicks to show currents flowing through it. And then we release our press switch. Again, you see our LED lights up momentarily as that field collapses. And when it collapses, of course, it also releases the paddle in there, which changes the connection points here because it's a relay.
So that's how Project 533 works. The last project we're going to look at is Project 534, the transformer lights. So here we are Project 534, the transformer lights. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've got our transformer with our press switch, and it's connected with our 6-volt lamp there. And then the output of our transformer is going through our 100 ohm resistor, and then we've got our red and green LEDs with opposing polarities on them. Now, as you see, we're stepping up on the transformer here because we're going from the smaller winding to the larger winding, so we're stepping up the output voltage there. So when you watch the LEDs here, when I press this press switch, the red LED briefly lights up as this 6 volt lamp is coming up. And then when we release the press switch, our green LED lights up as the 6 volt lamp is going out. So what's happening here? Well, when we first press the press switch, we're charging up a magnetic field here in this coil and while that's happening it's inducing a current over here that we're seeing through our red LED when it briefly lights up and our 6 volt lamp here when it's fully lit up tells us that this coil is fully charged so when you look at the timing between them you can tell that and then when we release the press switch the green LED lights because when we remove power from the coil here, that magnetic field collapses. And again, that also induces a current on the other side of the transformer, but now it's in the other direction. So it lights our green LED because the transformer likes to work with an alternating current. So by pulsing the press switch on and off, we create an alternating current output on our transformer. And so that's why the opposing LEDs light up as we press and release our press switch. So that's how Project 534 works, and that concludes this set of Snap Circuits projects.